Recently, I've been spending some time recording white shark movements, specifically their use of the dorsal fin and how it may move in ways previously unknown. You may recall this video from last year. Watch it closely and you will see the dorsal fin appears to move in a sideways fashion. Right there, it really does appear this shark is batting at the object. Replaying it in slow motion, you can see it is a piece of wood and that the shark investigates it with its nose. And then comes the cool part. The dorsal fin appears to move on its own. Now, I've seen this behavior with dolphins in the past, but never before with a shark. Can sharks use their dorsal fin in the same manner? It's an interesting question because the dorsal fin of sharks has previously been thought to only serve the purpose of steering and maneuvering. It helps the shark make sharp turns and sudden changes in direction, which are essential for hunting prey. So if the dorsal fin has more function than merely steering, how can objects attached to the dorsal fin affect the movement of a shark or its general health? This is a shark dragging an object wrapped around the dorsal fin. Over the course of three days, I filmed this shark without an exact certainty of what was wrapped around the fin. Images like this are vital to understanding how sharks continue their journey of life with injuries and obstructions. As I examined the footage closer, it became clear that the most visible part is organic matter, likely a kelp stocking. But when looking even closer, I determined it is a leader with a fishing line wrapped in kelp. It definitely isn't something I prefer to see, but the reality is that this shark will likely be fine. However, look closer and you'll see that there's something else that is interesting. Right there, by its nose. Notice the white scars. You'll get a good look at it here. The white marks appear to be a bite from another shark. It's not rare for sharks to engage in tussles with each other. The scars appear to be healed, but the dorsal fin still drags the object. It's a pretty good reminder of just how rugged these creatures are. Whether they are engaged with other sharks or human objects or even other species, it's clear that the life of a shark is a hardened one. These are yellowtail barracuda, also known as California barracuda. I have never seen a school this big. When one lone bat ray made its way through the school, it was incredible to witness. This lone bat ray, unfazed by the barracuda, continued on its path as hundreds of barracuda simply moved out of the way. As I watched this, I wondered what, if any response, the bat ray would make if they touched. Why would the bat ray travel through a large school like this, unless it knew this giant school was harmless? From high above, you could see the massive school of barracuda unlike any I've ever seen before. Deep down inside, I secretly wished a white shark would make an appearance. I wondered how a barracuda would react to a white shark. Luckily, last week, I found out. Here's a few barracuda on the chase of a great white shark. Except, it wasn't a chase. This young shark didn't seem to be evading the fish at all. Watch how it just calmly cruises along. At one point, a barracuda actually touches the shark. Watch this. This is likely a symbiotic relationship, and it appears the shark is more than willing to play along. The yellowtail barracuda is more than likely biting off parasites from the shark's skin. The itchy parasites serve as food for the fish. It's a behavior I've seen in the past with a different species of fish, but never with barracuda. Here are some California yellowtail doing the same thing with a very small white shark. It's often apparent that many species of fish actually have a symbiotic relationship with the white sharks. These relationships are always beautiful to observe.
And that lone ray? Well, come to think of it, rays don't seem to be phased by much. Just watch how these rays don't alter their course, with a white shark approaching. Needless to say, they appear to be very confident creatures. Here's a ray that even seems to follow a white shark along the path. Look closely at this clip and you'll see multiple rays next to leopard sharks. White sharks eat both rays and leopard sharks, so it's no wonder that I'm finding great white sharks of all sizes in and near kelp beds. Lately, it's been the larger sharks that I've observed near kelp. It's been previously argued that white sharks do not prefer areas with kelp. However, new aerial views seem to be proving otherwise. In fact, Underwater footage from one study published in 2019 by marine biologist Oliver Jewell contained some of the most compelling footage of a white shark in kelp. The footage contains sharks chasing seals through kelp. I've linked to that study in the video description below. I highly recommend it. Overall, it appears that the main reason sharks venture into kelp is that those areas attract a wide variety of marine life, including fish, seals, sea lions, and other potential prey species. According to the study, it also appears that sharks have learned that prey view the kelp beds as refuge, and that sharks have figured that out. As I've always said, Sharks are much smarter than many people give them credit for. They have to be in order to have survived on this planet for so long.